But our next question sent to cornydrivethrough at gmail.com from Coyote. Recently, Wiley, Wiley to you. Recently on Wrestling Observer Live, Dave Meltzer mentioned to Brian Alvarez that he thinks that the reason why NXT did not do as well this week in the ratings than AEW did was because they have a cookie-cutter style of wrestling. For example, everyone wrestles the same style trained by the induction area they start at. Uh, I don't know exactly what word he meant to use there. Rather than offer various forms of wrestling, like strong style, lucha libre, etc. Oh, good God. Do you agree? Do you think that those styles of wrestling that are not based on the American style of wrestling have not been pushed by WWE recently? Well, now he's taking a, a turn yeah, there. This, this whole email is uh, interesting. First, first of all, I agree with Uncle Dave that all the guys on NXT wrestle the same because they've been trained in the same system by people that are instructed to train them the same way, and that's a problem, and it, it sucks. So I agree there. How he can not apply that same statement or principle to AEW because even more so, at least you can... You can follow the NXT matches, even if you don't like them. On AEW, as we've mentioned, it is literally the same shit over and over and over. Jumpstart, multiple man matches, ridiculous amounts of dives and stupid gymnastics and cheerleading routines to set up preposterous bumps that half of them miss and half of them make. And then some kind of finish, and then an afterbirth. And yes, I think there are rooms for room for different styles of wrestling also, but here's the common thread in most of the styles that are presented on AEW is the guys aren't any good at them. They're just doing shit uh, that they're making up as they go along or that they think was a good idea that they called in the locker room there are very few, the only really quality workers that they have in AEW are the veterans that, like Christian and Kazarian and Daniels and those guys that would work closer to a fucking WWE style than anybody else. Because at least they know how to work and they've been well trained and they've got a lot of experience. But if you look at the, just the, the scrambled egg mess, that's what we used to call it. You know, when, when guys would come back and and have had a match that went all over the place and it didn't make sense, you couldn't follow it. The booker, whoever was going to dress you down, would say it was scrambled eggs. AEW, that's all they do is scrambled egg matches, whether they're strong style or lucha style or... And here's another thing. You're a fucking idiot. If you think that you can put most, even good lucha workers in with just a regular American and have anything other than a clusterfuck, because it's going to throw them off. You have to have American guys that have spent a lot of time in either Mexico or Japan to be able to halfway learn that shit, and then they're just going to go for good quality cheerleading routines. But but no, Dave was right about one, but he, he needs to apply the same thing to the other. They don't have the same kind of matches, but it's the same kind of thing. They do all the shit they do. It looks the same, and it just goes faster and makes less sense. There are, you know, there are a few world-class practitioners of this art on either channel. And they get over and do what they do well. And the rest of them are all doing the same shit and they're indistinguishable from each other. Figure me out the difference between the, the Lucha Brothers on AEW and the lucha suits on nxt except the lucha suits are not as dangerous or reckless in their work and actually the match tries to make some semblance of sense otherwise it's all the same i think the lucha brothers are better than the lucha suits no they're not i think so they're not because they miss they miss as much as they hit see here's the i don't care if you do the greatest shit in the world half the time if the other half the time you're falling on your fucking face at people's feet, then you're the shits because you have done the one thing that it's unforgivable to do. 
from the time that I was a fan, when I was nine years old, first watching this shit, I cringed when people missed shit and it was obviously fake. It was obviously they they botched up something that they were both cooperating with each other to do. That is the cardinal sin in professional wrestling. When I was a fan, before I was even a photographer, I would look around and hope that other people didn't see what I just saw and it didn't register on them because I knew that would be bad for the overall wrestling business. Every impression you make on a human being's brain is cumulative. And the more impressions of bullshit instead of the impressions of wow is bad for the business. Every time a person gets the bullshit impression instead of the wow impression, it has a cumulative effect. So I have always made that my cardinal sin. I don't care what else is wrong with the fucking match. If you do shit that's above your fucking capabilities and you fuck it up and it looks phony, that's the worst thing you can do in the fucking ring. I'd rather have somebody do basic shit and make it all look good and not see through. Because And, and somebody's going to say, well, that person wouldn't get over. Well, that person doesn't need to get over. Because if all of he can do is basic shit and make it look good, he can't make the good shit look good, then he doesn't need to get over. Don't fuck the business up trying to get over. That's the whole point with these, the whole concept of the existence of a team like the Young Bucks or these other goofballs. Just because you can't get over by doing this right doesn't mean that you should be allowed to prostitute it to your fucking specifications so that you can get yourself over and make the business look like shit for the rest of us that can do it right. So that's always been my thing. And the Lucha brothers fall on their ass half the time. So I don't care what they do. The other part, if you can't go all the way through a match without a buzz killing moment that looks obviously phony, you shouldn't be in that fucking spot. You said when you were a kid, you used to cringe when you would see that. Any examples? Was it Bruiser's TV? Was it guys you saw live in Louisville? Oh, boy. Um, well, I mean, there was always, especially in the mid-70s, when you'd get some guys that Nick would book because they had so many towns going and, and et cetera, that in the opening match, somebody would do something and just it was just, ooh. And sometimes even the people go, oh, like the, you'd hear the little grumble, like, ooh, I think they're faking. Because it was not a goddamn foregone conclusion. And on Bruiser's TV in the dying days of, the, oh my God, one of the worst things that I ever saw, I was already smart to the business by then, but everybody in the building groaned. The 1982, or was it 81? God damn it. 81. Because 82, I was about to get in the business. But 81 uh, WFIA convention was in Indianapolis. And that was eight years too late. And one of the matches was Bobo Brazil against Tiny Tim Hampton, or when he was a heel, Trader Tim Hampton, who was an obese at the time because he was in his 50s. And Bobo was, let's see, in 1981, Bobo, oh God, he was born 20. He had to be 60. Anyway, if he wasn't, he was close. And Tim Hampton was this obese, sloppy, fat African-American gentleman that they had a singles match and Bobo backed him up and shot me and Brian Hildebrand were shooting pictures right at ringside next to each other, as we usually did ended up at these shows. He was next to me in, in Memphis, next to me there. Bobo shot Tim Hampton off and it took him, I'd say a good 30 seconds to get to the other side of the ring and come back to Bobo and Bobo. <laughs> I mean, it was brutal. And Bobo just stood there and held up his elbow and Tim Hampton <laughs> ran at Bobo and at the right time ducked his head under the elbow and stopped with both feet and raised his head up under the elbow and hit his own self and took a bump. No, come yeah. on. <laughs> and I mean, and I'm like, oh, fuck. Because they were so fucking old. And, and Tim Hampton had never been good anyway. He was one of the, I guess, in the, you know, I think he might have been related to Bobo at, at, in some way, shape, or form, but they'd used him in Detroit and the Midwest over the years a number of times. But 
and sometimes as a manager, anyway, those type of things you would see the when the work level would go down in territories that were about to go out of business, and and they would use you know inexperienced guys or guys that were just completely out of shape or names that had long since you know passed their prime, and you would see stuff that looked like that, and and it always just made my it made my it didn't not just gave me a sick stomach it made my heart hurt because I said every time and that's why I always tried to whatever I did physically it may not have looked like it killed somebody but it looked like I was trying with all of my heart um that was always the criminal offense to me doing something that didn't look good or that you could tell you could visually it slapped you in the face was requiring cooperation i know a lot of wise asses will say well somebody shot you into the ropes you wouldn't come back i got news for you on certain occasions especially if somebody like one of the road warriors or fucking dr death or somebody got a little fucking excited you'd come halfway back when they shot you in those ropes before you could stop yourself i've, I've but i know but the point is is that there are things in wrestling that came to be accepted visually as working as as it, it not as working in wrestling, but it, it worked visually. It worked. You couldn't see through it. It was accepted. This is the way things are. It didn't slap you in the face. If you sat down and micromanaged it, yes, you could figure it out. But in the moment, as you're looking at it, a live event or on TV without stopping and slow mowing it, oh wow! But there were also things, and there now more than ever are where they're slapping you in the face with obvious cooperation, where two grown adult men cannot stand on the top rope while fighting with each other without losing their balance. No, it can't happen. Not in any universe. Or all this other stupid shit where they wait to catch the diver and they they stand there slack-jawed and dumbfounded with a monotone expression on their face while somebody goes through 15 goddamn revolutions of a flip off the top rope so that they can give them a move all you'd have to do is walk away from it the obvious shit that nobody can fucking rationalize could really happen and is not the subject of cooperation that's the worst criminal offense in a pro wrestling event and that's why that i always rewarded guys that worked for me for doing a degree of difficulty of five and an ex- and an execution of ten instead of the other way around, if you're gonna fucking expose the business, make everybody look like idiots, do it on somebody else's show. Don't do shit you don't know how to do, and don't fucking try to start doing college shit when you're still working on fucking grade school textbooks. Your basics and go from there. If you can't fucking perform the shit that you were doing in the wrestling ring and make it look good to the people without obvious cooperation from your opponent or without fucking falling on your face and not hitting the guy to begin with, don't do that shit, whether it gets you over or not. Because I don't care if you get over. I care if the business gets over and stays over. And you, you little pipsqueak individual who I'm talking about, whoever you may be out there, just because you can fucking get over doing some goofy shit that nobody was ever allowed to do before, and you find some idiot that'll let you do it, doesn't mean it's good for the business, it just means it's good for your fucking business. And I don't give a fuck about your fucking individual business when I'm talking about the entire goddamn wrestling business. And that's why that everybody now that that doesn't watch wrestling anymore, which is the majority of people, think it's all a goddamn shit show because all of a sudden, everybody was just allowed to do whatever the fuck they wanted to do, whether it looked good or not. And all those impressions on individual people multiplied over a period of time has led to the average person now saying wrestling's a fake bunch of silly bullshit and we ain't gonna watch it. So that's why I fuck y'all. I hate you. Well, it's too bad that you can't sue these perpetrators of fakeness in professional Boy, if wrestling. I can sue these perpetrators, these perpetrators and puppet masters. You know who I would get? You know who I would call in a second if I could figure out a way to sue these people for malfeasance in the wrestling business and failure to fucking keep up proper appearances? You know who I would call? Do you know? Do you know? 
That's exactly right. Whether it is fakery, treachery, criminality, and malfeasance in professional wrestling, or in nursing homes, the VA hospital, poisoned towns. 3M. 3M. What do they stand for? The Minnesota Manufacturing and Mining Monopoly? That's 4Ms. That's 4Ms. Anyway, That's 4Ms. it was on Twitter. But nevertheless, all those people, Johnson and Johnson, for heaven's sake, let's not forget both of those big Johnsons. All of those people and more have been brought to their knees, had their knees freeze and their liver quiver, courtesy of the consigliere of the cult of Cornette, the attorney for the ages, Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. Yes, he has brought numerous grown men to their knees in front of him, and he can do the same thing. Well, let's not say that that way. He's brought people to justice. <laughs> And he can do the same thing for you if someone has unjustified you. So regardless of, of what your issue may be, what your situation may be, give newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084, a call, and try to get even with Stephen. He will advise you on your situations. But once again, these, these major corporations and these heartless businesses and institutions that don't care about the little guy, Imagine being assaulted at a VA hospital. Imagine being mistreated in a nursing home. Stephen P. News on the side of the little guy. He will get even for what has happened to you, your family, your friends, and your close social circle of beloved enemies. <laughs> 